G'day guys, it's Paul from Polyman Astro, and in today's video we're going to use just GHS to produce some colour-rich, vibrant SHO images. So the data we're going to be working with is my data on Gabriella Mistral, which is a nebula just off of Eta Carina. Now I've already done a fair bit of linear processing here and I'm ready to stretch. And it's important that we're at this point because once we start working with GHS, we're technically going non-linear. So I've gone through and done background extraction, blur exterminator, noise exterminator, star exterminator, anything you need to do in the linear stage, make sure you do it because as I said, once we use GHS, we're technically going non-linear. So I'm gonna combine these into an SHO image using channel combination. So sulfur in the red, hydrogen in the green, oxygen in the blue. And then I'm going to rename that SHO, so just so I can keep track of this window in case I lose it somewhere. And let's have a look at it. We can see it looks largely green at the moment because hydrogen's dominating. Uh, but there is a slight cast to the color in the background as well, which we're going to see in the GHS histogram and explain why that's there and, and how to fix it. Okay, so let's open up GHS and we'll reset it. And what I need to do, because it's linear, the, the histogram's currently on the left here, is zoom in so I can see my histograms. So the reason that there's a background cast is that these histograms aren't lined up with each other. So the background is basically anything to the left of the histogram up to the peak. So for red, the left of the histogram here up to about the peak, the blue up to about the peak here and green and so on. The reason there's a slight bluey kind of greeny cast is because the blue and the green histograms, the left hand edges of them, are further forward of, of the red. So what we need to do first is we need to line up those left-hand edges up to about the peak, um, and that'll neutralize the background. And then we'll be able to stretch the image out and, and start playing with these colors. Um, now this image is nice because it's kind of going to cover every possibility. Because what, what's going to happen is either you've got a histogram to the left and a histogram to the right, as you can see here. We're going to base everything off the green hydrogen histogram and move everything to line up with it. So red's to the left of green and blue's to the right. Um, sometimes they'll both be to the left, sometimes they'll both be to the right, but at least in this case, you've got to see how to move both of them to line them up with green. So let's work with red first. So I want to move red to the right, which means I need to put the symmetry point on the left. I need to put it on the other side of where I want to move it because then I can move everything nicely in the other direction without accidentally clipping things. So it doesn't actually matter where I put this symmetry point on the left here for the for the background area, as long as it's to the left of the histogram and I'm not going to clip anything. So I'll send that. I've just chosen a point there and I've sent that SP point. Um, let's choose a fairly strong local intensity. So most of the stretch will happen around there. And then what I want to do is make sure I choose the red channel. Uh, oh, I've got to do a little bit of a stretch on the red. Um, before I can actually use these sliders. So the, the LP and the HP are what move the histogram left and right, but I need to actually have done a stretch before I can use them. So doing a little bit of a stretch, see how that's pushed the histogram to the right, which is what I wanted, but it's obviously gone too far. I need to now pull it back to line up with the green. And that's where the HP slider is. That's what moves it back to the left. LP moves it to the, the right, HP moves it to the left. So I'm going to pull it back until those histograms line up, that the left-hand edges and the and the peak line up as best I can. Uh, if you find that this slider is just not fine enough for you, it's moving too much, then that's what the fine adjustment section here is for. Uh, you just got to choose the appropriate thing that you want to use. So you would, here we'd be using the HP slider, so you choose HP, and then I can use this fine adjustment to move it left and right. So I want to roughly line up the left hand edge and the, the peak as much as I can and I can see using my preview whether that's done anything. So there was a slight blue cast and now it, once I apply this there's slightly less which is good. So that's moving the red histogram from the left to the right. How do we move the blue histogram from the right to the left? Well same idea. Uh, this time I need the SP on the right hand side to move it to the left move everything backwards, but it's important, very important here on, on the highlight end that I don't clip anything. So I need to make sure 
this symmetry point is absolutely smack bang on the right hand edge so that I don't clip anything because um, yeah the highlights are very sensitive to clipping the we can get away with a bit of clipping on the, the shadow end but the highlights will really notice it so I've got to make sure that that symmetry points at one I'm going to choose a big high intensity again uh, make sure I choose blue and then drag and you'll see it moves to the left which is what I want but it's gone too far and the LP is what moves it back to the right and all I need to do is just line up that, that edge uh, so that the background becomes much more neutral now okay and again if, if that's if if that's not fine enough then choose because we're using the LP slider here choose LP here and then you can move it backwards and forwards okay so that's step one done we've, we've kind of now we've lined the backgrounds up a bit better than they were so it's more neutral the next step is going to be to do the stretch uh, and then we'll be able to adjust these colors uh, to balance them a little bit. So let's go through and do our stretch now, just like we normally would with GHS. So choose a point to the right of the histogram. We'll choose a fairly decent uh, B value for our first stretch. I can turn off the screen transfer function so I can see what the stretch is going to look like. And I want to pull this out till it looks kind of where I want things to, to be. That looks quite nice. Looks fairly decent as a stretch. Um, let's have a bit of a play with the symmetry point. What about if we move it back here more? Yeah, I think I like that a bit better. All right, so that's probably a good first stretch. Um, you can see that I was worried that I was clipping the background there because I'd chosen to the right of the blue, but that was quite extreme for the, the other two histograms because they're more broader. So I pulled that SP value back so it, the background now looks a little bit more gray um, and I don't feel like I've clipped things. So that's all I was doing there in case you were wondering. So let's reset this. So now I've done a stretch. What I want to do though is you can see the green histograms much broader than the red and the blue, particularly the blue. So let's work with stretching those channels now. So I'm going to choose the blue channel and choose a point kind of in the middle of the histogram so that I can stretch it out. Uh, we'll start with an intensity of five here Oops, I better send that SP value. Um, and what I want to do is stretch this blue channel out. What I, what I don't want to do is pull that stretch factor so much that I end up bifurcating the, the histogram here. I want to keep it as one histogram as much as possible. So something like that's okay. It's still one histogram. Um, and then I want to pull it back. So it's kind of, again, this ends lining up again. So that might be too extreme on the stretch, I think. Um, all right, so let's have a bit of a play with the, the SP value here and see what we can what we can do. So what I'm trying to do is kind of keep one nice, fairly uniform histogram. That's important with GHS. Probably, probably we use LP here to move it because I want that background to stay kind of neutral. So there we go. We've, we've introduced some more blue into the image compared to what we had. So now we better work on the red, the red histogram. Um, and I want to stretch this out. So I want to what I want to do is kind of drop, see how it, my red is already bifurcated, uh, the way the data's worked on, on this, probably because the, the, the sulfur is so weak. Um, so there is a bifurcation here. So if I choose the SP point right on that point there, um, then when I do my stretch, what it's going to do is pull that point down. And the reason that that humps there is because there's a lot of 
red in just that luminance, um, which basically means there's a lack of contrast um, because most of the, the data is in this small brightness value. So if I can drag that down, then I'm going to improve the contrast and we'll see that hopefully in a second. So if I drag this down, then it's kind of turning into one peak now. We've still got this little hump here, but at least it's turned kind of into one hump. But obviously I need to drag this back to kind of line up with where I want. Um, and now we can play with that SP value again. Uh, I didn't actually apply that SP value, did I? Whoops, there we go. <laughs> that made a difference. Um, so we'll do, do our stretch um, to kind of make that a more uniform hump. And now I better drag it back this direction. And look at that. So we've already got some reds starting to appear in our image, which is nice. It's already starting to look more like a Hubble palette image, which is precisely what we want. Um, what can we work on now? So that there's a lot of green in this section. The kind of peak of the greens really moved um, quite significantly. So let's see if we can fix green up a little bit. See, I'm kind of trying, what I'm trying to do is kind of get the the kind of intensity level equal for the whole, whole three histograms here. So I think that's made quite a drastic difference. Um, it's kind of brightened up the, the interior here, but we might be able to fix that in a minute. Um, but you can already see the colors, the Hubble palette, that made a, a big difference in terms of where we were. So we were there and now we're here. We've got much more even colors in there now, which is kind of where we want things. Um, now we can work on saturation, I guess. I can choose saturation here. Choose a point out here. Okay, look at that. And what I want to do now is kind of work on the, it's kind of too bright here. Maybe I'll make that a three. Kind of too bright. So that's tamed it down just a little bit, I think. There we go. So that's looking pretty much now, I think, like a, a nice kind of Hubble palette image that we're expecting to, to see. Um, and it was all done using GHS and just balancing those channels. If there's still too much green for your liking, you could keep working on playing with your channels a little bit. Um, but I think that's looking pretty nice. Um, so let's put the stars back. Um, I've got a little script here that'll put these stars back. I've also got a luminance channel here. I'm not sure I fully like it, but I've got a luminance channel here. So we could always do an LRGB to see what that looks like. And obviously now that we've added that in, uh, the luminance, whoops, the luminance tends to destroy the... Um, saturation a little bit so let's put some saturation back into the image and there we go so that was just a quick play obviously if you were playing more with your data uh, and working with the channels a little bit more carefully you could produce something uh, a little bit more pleasing than than what we've got here um, but i think that's a a good demonstration of how to use GHS to get a more Hubble palette look, to balance your background first, 
um, and then start balancing out your histograms, equalizing your histograms, I guess you could call it, so that they're kind of the same broadness. Um, and then you've controlled the background to make it nice and neutral and you've balanced your colors to get that nice SHO look. Um, so there's still green in there. That's important to me anyway, in a, a true Hubble palette image. You need to have that green. It shouldn't just be yellow and blue. That should have all sorts of different colors within it. And you can do it all just using JHS. That's the point of the video. So while that wasn't the best um, overall final image, I hope you'll agree that the idea of what I want to show you here is the, the important bit that you can use GHS to balance your backgrounds, to get the, the background nice and uniform, and then to equalize your histograms so that it's not green dominant and you get that beautiful complex SHO color palette using just one tool. Thanks for watching.